Okay, hi all. Welcome to my living room slash dining room. Well, actually, I am in the living room. We're going to do a garden update today. And we're not really doing a gardening update as we are watering the plants. Basically, now that you have your indoor plants inside, you just want to feel, if they feel really dry, give them a nice drink of water. And I try to do this a couple of times Oh, um, either a week or at least every weekend, I check my, my plants to make sure that they have plenty of, of water and they're getting enough sunlight. And you just want to make sure that you're giving them enough water. And don't overwater. I'm going to turn you guys over so you can see this. So it's a little hard because you're on my cocktail table. You might notice this this great big thing over over here. This is what they call a um, cactus. You don't need to go overboard water watering him. They actually don't like a ton of water. Now, some people call this a Christmas cactus, and in my case, it is not because it's got no buds. Mine usually blooms more around the Easter holiday than the Christmas holiday. Now, it used to bloom around Thanksgiving and Christmas, but in order for your Christmas cactuses to do that, it has to maintain a specific amount of light, moisture, and soil, and temperature. So, mine has now turned into an Easter cactus, and it has beautiful pink flowers when it blooms. This is showing me no, this is showing me no uh, um, signs that it's going to bloom this holiday season. Also, if you transplant it, and if you remember over the summer, and I don't remember if I did a video on, on the Christmas cactus or not, I actually transplanted it to a bigger pot because it was outgrowing its small pot and it's now actually outgrowing this pot and I really need to put it in in new soil and transplant it to an even bigger pot. That will stun its flower production and kind of it needs to regroup and reorganize once it's transplanted. And sometimes it can take up to a year for the plant to reestablish itself and get used to its new surroundings. So, if your Christmas cactuses aren't showing signs that they're going to bloom, don't panic. Eventually, they'll bloom, and you'll get to enjoy their, their flowers. Now, I want to do one big thing, and I know I did this a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about gardening. Now that we're going get and getting into the holiday season... I know a lot of you guys are gung-ho about going out and, and decorating your houses and homes for the Christmas holiday season, for Hanukkah, for the major ho holidays, for the new year. That's fine. If you have dogs and cats, though, keep in mind you do not want to bring poinsettias into the house. You don't want to bring in any type of a lily. That also goes for the... Um, and I have to think what they're called, and I'm going to mispronounce it. Um, it's a great big flower, um, am amaryllis, I think that's what they're called. Those are all toxic and deadly to do both dogs and cats. In my house, I have one rule. Yes, they're beautiful, but none of those plants come into the house because... Not only is the plant deadly, but if the dogs or cats drink any of the water in the bowl that your flowers are sitting in, that's toxic to them and that can kill them. So rather than taking a risk of, of making your four-legged creatures deadly sick to the point where they, they die, let's keep them safe this holiday season. Now, there are a lot of great alternatives. A Christmas cactus is wonderful to have in the house, and they require very little work, and they will bloom for the holidays. That's a very pretty alternative to bring into the house, and that is not poisonous 
to either cats or dogs. Roses. You can have beautiful roses in vases. And you'll notice on my table over here, that's another alternative is to get fresh flowers versus plants. Now, green plants such as um, palms uh, and ferns. If your ferns are up high, that's okay for dogs and cats. You just want to make sure your cats aren't eating your ferns because that can mess with their digestive tracts. Spider plant is really good to have. You can do garland. You can do fresh garland. Just don't put tinsel on. Tinsel is not deadly to dogs and cats, but if it gets chewed, it can get wedged into their digestive tracts, and it can make them sick. The other thing that I forgot to neglect and wanted to mention is you do not want to bring any holly of any type into your house. I know... Holly is very beautiful. Mistletoe is also very beautiful to have. You hang it up. Those are also very deadly to your four-legged creatures, your cats and dogs. Those should not be brought into a house that has dogs and cats. If you have friends that have pets and you see them buying poinsettias or something, they may not know, and you may want to educate them that those are very toxic for their four-legged creatures. And it's better not to bring those into the house. Now, your live trees, you can go ahead and bring those in. In my house, I don't usually do a live tree, and I haven't done a tree in, a, in quite a while because my male dogs think that I have brought nature into the house. And, of course, a tree means that they can pee on it. So I try not to bring those those in. And my husband and I this year have decided we're probably not going to put a, up a tree this year. Just because I don't have the room in the living room. Or if I do a tree, I may do a small one that can go on, on the uh, cocktail table this year. So stay tuned for that. We'll see what, what our decision is. So this is going to conclude the Gardening with Joel update. Tune in next month. Because I'm not going to do another gardening update for a month. Uh, tune in next month and we'll, we'll talk more gardening. So I'll see you on the next Gardening with Joel video.